Hi, I'm JJ Barnes and this is Jonathan McKinney. Hello. You might know us as authors and screenwriters. I'm the author of the Lily Prospero series. He is the author of the Shieldmaid Saga. And we also have a film in production right now called Hollowhood, which you can find on YouTube, all the backstage info and character interviews and things we're doing. So we're going to be talking to you about writing advice. Today we're going to be talking about writing resurrection of characters. Okay. Right. This is something that people like to do. Yes. Um, especially if they want to A, um, make war or fight or, you know, tense, scary scenes. Mm -hmm. So they want there to be threat. They want there to be, you know, tension and stakes and they want to make it really as scary and as you know dramatic as they possibly can so they want to kill some characters right so you kill like a favorite character yeah but then because it's a favorite character and you want to write them you bring them back yes um obviously i think the most famous example of this would be john snur i was gonna say jesus <laughs> right that's not a story of like, you know, like a, I was like, all right, fine. You go, Jesus. <laughs> I'll go, Jon Snow. Okay. Because obviously they killed Jon Snow. Yes, they did. He lay in the in the snow. And the series ended, like the season ended. The season ended on the death of Jon Snow. Yeah. Um, but then, of course, very early on in the following series, he is resurrected by yeah, the, the Red, red, woman, red, woman, red The Red, red woman. woman. Yeah. Um... It's a choice. It's a bad choice. Well, you know, in our tropes video, I was yeah. like, I've done this one and I've done this one. <clears throat> yeah. I have done character resurrection. Yeah. Right. So I don't say it's always a bad choice. Oh, I mean, it's however, <laughs> I meant specifically the the death and resurrection, the way that Jon Snow was. The reason I agree, and I think that it's a, it is it's obviously it's not just Game of Thrones. A lot of a lot of stories do this because. They like to, as I say, the battle and the fight and the tension, but you don't want to lose a favourite character. There's one reason why why writers would do this. What's the reason? That it's incredibly dramatic and powerful to have a character die, mm -hmm. but you have an actor who people like, who is contractually obliged well, to come back. <laughs> that's probably the Kit um, Harrington reason. But like in books, that's not true. People do it in books as well. Well, in books, it's a completely different thing. You don't have people's jobs to consider. Yeah, um, in, in, yeah in, in screen... It is people's jobs, it's producers, it's network demands, yeah. it's not just the writer's decision. Yes. But in books, yeah. it is the writer's decision. Correct. People still do it. Yes. And here's why it's bad. For the most part, as I say, I have done this myself and I will explain why what I did was different. Because I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, right, so the reason it's bad to begin with is because if you resurrect characters when they die, mm -hmm you stop being scared of their death. The tension is immediately sapped away because you don't think they're gonna die anymore if people can just be brought back. It, de it depends, every time anybody is resurrected in There's fiction, a price. in fantasy fiction always, obviously, you wouldn't have in, um, you know, <laughs> what's a non-fiction, uh, 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 like, non-fantasy. Um, a, a bodyguard. You wouldn't have in the TV show. Yeah, God, yeah. You wouldn't you have would, a resurrection. You wouldn't in that have resurrection. In that. There's no wizards would, or anything. It would change the nature of the show immensely. Yeah, or in but, Chuck. Imagine if in Chuck. Yeah. Well. Oh, I uh, say. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're, if you're doing anything with urban fantasy or you know, fan, high fantasy or whatever, and you bring characters back to life, you obviously every writer who's ever chosen to do this creates their way of explaining it, and. If that explanation is weak, then it is something that could, well, that shatters the believability of the world because, and also the motivation of every character afterwards. Because if, say for example, if we were in an urban fantasy and we're fighting monsters, right? We yes. fight vampires. And out fighting vampires, I was killed, right? Oh, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Or just, you know, dead but not turning up, just dead dead, mm. right? Mm. And you were heartbroken and you were like, I don't know if I can go on. And you know, your friend the witch was like, I have a spell that can bring him back to life. First of all, you're thinking, one, why haven't you done it before? Every time anybody that like is dead, every time. Uh, two, 
can you do that every time? Because if so, teach everyone how to do that and you've solved death in the entire world. Which might be a problem, but still kind of important, I think. Everybody, when somebody dies, they'd be like, oh, if you can bring them back... Yeah, do that, please. Please do. So, But in terms of, not just, I agree, in terms of the universe you're building and the, and the, the world that you're building, it breaks it, I agree. Yes. And secondly, in terms of how your audience is going to respond, yeah. the more you do it... There's a sigh, I think. It might not be an audible sigh. Yeah, it's but... both a sigh of, oh God, right, of course he's not dead, of course, like, obviously, but also you're not then going to be scared. You're not going to be tense. You're not going to be like in a battle, like actually believing there's peril, that you won't because it's like, well, even if there's peril now, you'll just bring them back. And the more you do it, the more times you repeat this cycle, the more you bring somebody back from the dead, like whether it's the same person or different people, the more you sap tension from your story because who's going to be worried? Who's going to actually think there is danger because you just keep bringing them back? So, if you are, are you going to get to the way to do it? Or? Not necessarily, you go first, because I'm okay. going to talk about why I did it and why I think it's fine. Okay, um, I think you're going to speak about consequence. Yes, right. I am, okay. literally, um, yeah. The, yeah, so first of all, yeah, if you're going to write a resurrection, okay, do not let us deter you, right? Do what you want to do. Um, however, um, some hints as to how to make it better if you are using magic, then let it be something that requires something incredibly rare, possibly one of a kind in the world, to perform this spell, right? So that it is a one time only thing. You can't just keep going to the well and saying, right, let's let's just charge at every enemy and not worry about it because we'll just do this spell afterwards and we'll all come back. That is a tension sapper, like you say. So if you if they have to use something um, that there is very little of, right? That might be very important for something else in the world. Then you've got conflict for, like, moral conflict. Should we even do it? Um, because if we're using this very yeah. powerful magical resource to... Like unicorn blood in Harry Potter. Right, right. Uh, it, it, you know, it, br it brings Voldemort back to life, or at least it keeps him alive from the brink of death, which is a similar concept, yeah. but it involves the slaying of a unicorn, and it's a very dark and right. you know, soul-destroying thing. So there's a consequence thing. there, too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you want to have a price, and that's sort of connected to what you're saying. Um, if you can foreshadow that it's possible without necessarily saying if you die, I'm going to bring you back like this. Yeah. But if you can drop the hints in, so that when it happens, it's paying off then it really won't feel just quite as convenient at the time. Um, Can I talk about when I did it? Yeah, I yeah, go for it. Okay, so I'm gonna be spoiling here, not fully. I won't like go into massive spoilerings here, mm -hmm. but I did a resurrection mm -hmm. in Lily Prospero and the Magic Rabbit. Yes. The reason I did it, and it works in my opinion is because it's not just a convenient resurrection because I like the character. It's a intrinsic, important, fundamental part of Lily's discovery of her power, mm -hmm. her development of her power. It's done in a way that that character who is resurrected pays a cost for it for the rest of their life. Um, it's a signal of the development of Lily's power. It's a part of like almost a test that she can accomplish it. It's not just, I killed them in this scene, but I want to keep writing them. I'll bring them back later because mm. I want to. It's a significant event in the story, which it is explained why she does not repeat it because of the price that is paid, which they learn afterwards. They discover the cost, they discover the consequences, they have to process it, it has con continual impact on every event afterwards. The entire second book, The Lily Prosper and the Mermaid's Curse, is affected by this monumental event that happened in the first book because of the price that it just continued to pay. So if you're going to do a resurrection, my advice would be 
don't make it just a convenient thing that you're like, you know what, I'm going to have a witch do a spell mm -hmm. and bring them back because I want to keep writing them. Have it be the significant and serious event that it should genuinely be. Resurrection. Bringing somebody back from the dead is a massive deal. Death is final. Death is the end. And if you can bring somebody back from the dead, that is going to have an impact on the person who can do it because of this moral decision. Like, do I just keep doing it? Mm -hmm. It's going to have an impact on the person who's been brought back because they were dead. Like, that, that is a nobody else in the world other than them, you know, depending on your world. But in theory, that is the only person in the entire world who has had that happen to them. They have been somewhere and experience like nobody else's experience and it will have a long-term mental and emotional impact on them as well as obviously in mind there is a, another price that is paid which again i'm trying to not do too many spoilers but there is a serious price paid for that decision and so yeah that is how i would say and i don't think you can do it much no you can't you can't you can't be like you know every book or every chapter or every fight or you know anytime i kill somebody i really like writing i'll just bring them back I think for the most part, death is it. If, they, if you kill a character, you, they stay dead. They are gone. The only time you ever see them again is in flashbacks or something mm -hmm. like that. That's different. But they cannot come back into your present day timeline. Unless, as I say, I made an exception for a very good reason. I personally think it works very well. It, in my opinion. Yeah, I have never written Absolute Resurrection. No. I have got, in the Shieldmaid Saga a something going on which yeah. is akin to it it is but it's not it's not quite no it's not it's but it's quite it is on it's on the spectrum it is on the resurrection spectrum um there is a character who at the you know time of where we it, are in the it, series is it, ostensibly is deceased it, but but it isn't necessarily it yeah it's so, different yeah but again that's interesting because <clears throat> it's different and it's not the same thing yeah, that character um, is not going to be. Ah, oh, I wouldn't say anything. Um, the um, <laughs> because it's not spoiling our own work. The, you can also play with like if one of the reasons I was saying about Jon Snow being badly done is that like because it is foreshadowed. The magic, the resurrection magic, is in Game of Thrones before Jon Snow is oh, resurrected. Oh, it is. Yeah. There's the scenes with the fellow who gets, you know, the the guy says the words and then he comes yeah. back to life and it's like he's done it seven or eight times or whatever. Um, so there's, it is foreshadowed, but the problem is that they ended the season on Jon Snow's face in the snow, getting you know dead, um, which and makes he's back and he's there in his black uniform. Yeah, which makes you, it, it is very much a statement of finality. It to feels do that. like ending on a lie. It is ending on a lie because yes, in the moment he is dead, but right at the beginning of the next season they undo it. Yeah. So. If you waited, because we didn't watch it live, we watched it... Um, we binged, basically. When it was finished. We just watched through the whole thing, so we didn't have to wait. We were never led to believe that Jon Snow was going to die. We just put the next one on, and we're like, no, he's coming back, obviously, because they're, they're bringing him back, uh, because the Red Woman saw him in a vision or whatever. If you do that, then you're losing people's trust that the next time you do that, <laughs> you're not, that you're not just going to bring them back again. Yeah. So why aren't they bringing the little girl back when they burned her at the stake? <laughs> it would have been difficult to bring Oberyn back. <laughs> he would. Yeah, he's just a pool of yeah. Um, so not nice for him. If if Jon Snow had been, you know, ashes or yeah, I guess or... then it would have been more final. While he's got a functioning body, not functioning, but yeah, yeah, potentially a... functioning body there. But, but yeah, I agree. <clears throat> I think it's. Not a good, generally. No, and you can work. you can play with your reader's expectations based on the perspective of the characters in your story. So a character might believe somebody else to be dead. You see, yes, you see, this is an interesting one. Right. So if that... you th if your character thinks they're dead, but you've never shown them dead, they you've not said they are dead. Yeah. It is just something they believe, and I think yes, that isn't that is a that is a mm, yes. Right. I quite like that. Because then you're not using magic to resurrect anybody, but you still do get I to like have. Do I like that? I do think I like that. Well, it depends how it's used. Again. Yeah. Um. So it's used in Buffy the Vampire Slayer in season three. Cordelia Chase gets a, like a bar <laughs> through the chest, and she's run, she's running up some stairs, and she falls and lands on this spike. And then they're walking past a funeral. Yeah, like she she has the death scene where she's talking to her boyfriend and 
um, and she sort of loses consciousness and the music's very sad and then it cuts to a, a funeral uh, from a distance and there's like the you know the, the clergyman reading the the bible or whatever and it's got the sad music and you think wow Cordelia's dead and then it pans down and you get Buffy and Willow who are work, um, wearing... So Cordelia's going to be fine, So right? Cordelia's going to be fine. They're, work, they're walking by in, like, casual wear. They're not wearing funeral clothes. They, they haven't yeah. been at this funeral. It's just... The funeral is just happening. That's just the writers and the director telling a joke. Yeah, um, that's quite funny. And I, I think it is funny. Um, other people don't like it, but I think it's over so quickly that it's just funny. Yeah, um, I agree. But... It's if, not ending a series and then coming back next week. No, week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Um... You know, in Emily, the first Childmaid's book, mm. um, there's a character in that who is left behind, shall we say, um, in a in a big fight with lots of enemies, and they uh, you assume that, that character dies, but I, because I never show it, anybody reading it yeah, would exactly. would be like, I'm waiting for that character to come back. But I think I waited long enough in the story to bring her back that. It should be like a victorious moment when she does return. Yeah, it's not like because uh... you've almost forgotten. If it was right afterwards, then you'd be yeah, like, "Oh, I agree. good, she was fine." Yeah. So yeah, there's I agree a lot of considerations to have, um, but you want that dramatic punch. You know, there's um, there's an episode of Angel where Lorne gets his head chopped off, and the yeah. episode ends with the character's head in a box. But he is a he's a, a demon character, so in the next episode it is revealed that that doesn't kill his species <laughs> of demon. And you're like, okay, so you just wanted to shock everybody it, for one week and then I don't do it. like that. No, it's 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 not great. It's not. Um But that's television, I suppose, that they want to get people to keep watching. Yeah. And we've but... talked about it before, like, you know, you you need somebody to watch next week, but it when you're watching it in the 21st century. <laughs> like, it would be alright if they revealed it straight away, I think. Or if the, it, what I would say would fix it would be that we, the audience, know that he's not dead, but the character who is shown the head yeah. still is shocked. And then at least we're... We in on the, the joke, we're in on the... We're not the joke, but we're in on the fact yeah. that he's not dead, so we don't feel like we're being Betrayed. lied to yeah. as well. Um, yeah, no, I completely agree. Yeah. So thank you very much for watching our video on resurrecting characters and why you should or should not do it as long as, you know, just be aware, be careful, don't do it cheaply. Mm -hmm. If you have any examples of character resurrection that you love or you are trying to do it right now in your work in progress, comment below and tell us about it because we'd love to know what you're writing and we'd love to know what you like about resurrection. Mm. Because, you know, you might have a different opinion to us and we'd love to hear it. If you could like this video and subscribe to our channel, you will help us keep growing and we will be able to bring you more writing advice. And uh, yeah, thank you much for watching. I'll be back soon. All right. Bye. Bye.